Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Christian street preachers are among those who could be caught by sweeping new powers proposed to combat antisocial behaviour. Under Clause 1 of a new antisocial behaviour bill, antisocial behaviour orders, or ASBOs, would be replaced by injunctions to prevent nuisance and annoyance, called IPNAs. The new injunctions are designed to be easier to obtain by the authorities and catch a lower threshold of conduct, namely nuisance or annoyance. But Lord MacDonald QC has written a legal opinion on the issue, saying the changes are too broad and could have unforeseen consequences on the ability of individuals to exercise their civil rights without state interference. Simon Calvert, director of campaign group Reform Clause 1, which also opposes the new injunctions, says the proposals need amending. So these new injunctions, they're not going to do anything to stop thugs and hooligans because they're already breaking lots of different laws. But because there are no safeguards, because there's no clear definition of what annoying is, it's very worrying for civil liberties. What it means is that ordinary people going about their ordinary business are at risk. Street preachers, uh, even Christmas carolers, uh, protesters, people just expressing strong opinions in public, they could all be hauled before the courts and deemed to be annoying. Now, I'm sure this wasn't the intention of the government, but the law is badly conceived, it's badly drafted, and it very much needs to be changed before it reaches the statute book. The National Secular Society has launched a campaign to end the Christian coronation oath. Keith Porteous Wood, Executive Director of the NSS, has confirmed that lawyers are investigating a challenge to the oaths, adding the investiture ceremony should be an inclusive one in which everybody should feel equally valued, not a religious service of one denomination. The Church of England has called the bid a publicity stunt, with Director of Communications Arun Aurora saying, this attempt to politicise the coronation is sadly misguided and deeply misjudged by an increasingly desperate campaign group. At her coronation in 1953, the Queen promised to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the Gospel, as well as agreeing to maintain the Protestant Reformed religion established by law. Earlier this month, the NSS was also accused of politicising Remembrance Sunday, after it called for the Church of England to be banned from its traditional role in the day. A new bid to legalise assisted suicide in Scotland has been launched, which would allow patients as young as 16 to tell their GP about their wish to be helped to die. Independent MSP Margot MacDonald's previous attempt to change the law in 2010 was soundly defeated, but she says public opinion has shifted and has decided to relaunch the assisted suicide bill. Opponents are concerned that it could see Scotland becoming a suicide tourism destination, along with other countries where the practice is legal, such as Switzerland. Meanwhile, a Europe-wide group campaigning against euthanasia has been launched in Brussels. Dr Kevin Fitzpatrick, coordinator for the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition Europe group, warned that evidence from jurisdictions where euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide is legal demonstrates beyond doubt how quickly and easily euthanasia is extended to others, especially disabled and elderly people. The BBC has allowed a controversial academic to appeal for funds to develop a hangover-free alcohol drug during a radio interview. Professor David Nutt was a guest on Radio 4's Today programme when he called on the government to back his idea. Claire Fox, director of the Institute of Ideas, said the broadcast was a kind of lobbying which got disguised as a science item, adding, if someone else went on and just said, I'm here to get investment in my company, the BBC wouldn't let that. Alcohol Concern also cautioned against the move, saying, We think we should focus on getting to the heart of the problem about what is going wrong in our drinking culture, rather than swapping potentially one addictive substance for another. The BBC has defended the broadcast, saying, Professor Nutt was questioned about the potential complications involved, and it was made clear to listeners that his research was at the early stages because he had not yet obtained funding for the project. Christians and other people of faith aren't applying to adopt children because they fear their beliefs will be a barrier. That's the view of two adoption groups, First for Adoption and Home for Good, who have set up a phone line to encourage more people from religious communities to come forward. According to a survey carried out by the groups, over half of people who said they were likely to adopt described themselves as actively practicing a religion. 
But the organisations point out that as well as many believing the common adoption myths about not being able to adopt if you are over 40, single, unmarried or already have children, actively religious people also often wrongly believe that their faith will prevent them being approved to adopt. Home for Good, which is a church-based group, say adopting is a fantastic opportunity for the church to be good news in society, change our communities and transform the lives of some of the most vulnerable children in the UK. And finally, a man has completed his goal of summarising every chapter of the Bible into 140 characters and sharing it on Twitter. Web designer Chris Juby shared one chapter every day for 1,189 days through his App Bible Summary account. The father of two, who is Director of Worship at King's Church Durham, tweeted his first summary in August 2010 and says he was delighted to have made 29,000 followers think about the Bible. Chris's final post was on Revelation 22 and reads, The river of life flows from the throne of God. Behold, I am coming soon. I am the beginning and the end. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. But what made Chris take on the project? I was looking for a way to focus my Bible reading. I thought writing summaries would, would help with that. And, uh, and then I thought, well, why not post them to Twitter? So it's a difficult task uh, choosing the main themes each day. I'm always really conscious of everything that I have to leave out. And I would certainly never present my summaries as replacements for scripture. It's kind of my notes and my conversation with the chapter of the Bible. Chris says his favorite tweet was a summary of Romans 8, which reads, the law of the spirit has set you free. We are children of God and co-heirs with Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.